Hello and welcome to this video example where we look at how to tell if a function is linear, how a function could be exponential, or if perhaps it was neither. I have three functions here, f of x, g of x, and h of x. I'll go ahead and tell you one of these is linear, one of them is exponential, and one of them is neither. Let's see how we can tell which is which. What we're about to do relies heavily on the fact that in the table the x values increment at a constant rate, 0, 2, 4, 6 difference of 2 each time. If we had a different constant difference, this would also work, but if we went 0, 1, 5, 7, for instance, this would not work. We'd have to try something else. All right, well, let's look at f of x first. If we look at f of x, the first thing we notice is that the y values are also increasing at a constant rate. Well, this tells us that the rate of change of f is constant. In other words, the function is linear. To make this a little more precise, look at those differences. 5 minus 2 is 3. 8 minus 5, also 3. And 11 minus 8 is also 3. This suggests that the function is linear, given the data that we have. In fact, it suggests what the slope of this would have to be. It's not 3 because we increased the y value by 3 when we increased x by 2. The slope is how much we increase the y value for each increase of x by 1. Another way to say that, the change in y is 3 that corresponds to a change of x of 2. So that means the change of y over the change in x, in other words, the slope, is 3 halves or 1.5. In fact, we could go ahead and find a formula for this function. f of x is going to be equal to mx plus b, the slope, times the x, times x, the variable x, plus some constant that corresponds to the y-intercept, corresponds to the place where x is equal to 0. So this would be f of x equals 1.5x plus the y-intercept. In this case, because we are given the y-value when x is 0, it is just that y-value. It is 2. A little easier. And the nice thing here is that we could actually compute other values of the function now. If, um, if you needed to tell me what f of 5 was, if that was missing in the table as it is here, f of 5 would just be 1.5 times 5 plus 2 Let's see, uh, 1.5 times 5 is 7.5, plus 2 is 9.5. Notice 9.5 is exactly between 8 and 11. The difference is 1.5 there. This makes sense, right? An increment of 1 in x should correspond to an increase of 1.5 in y. All right, f of x is linear. Let's take a look at g of x. Is g of x also linear? Well, if it were linear, then it would have constant slope, and an increase of two, an increase by two in x, corresponds to a difference in y values of three, going from two to five. But it's a different difference when we go from five to twelve and a half. It's much more. It's seven and a half. So the slopes are increasing. The rate of change that g of x is increasing by is increasing. So it is not linear, it does not have a constant rate of change. However, let's look at what happens when we look at ratios between terms instead of differences. 5 over 2 is the same as 12.5 over 5, and that's the same as 31.25 divided by 12.5. They're all two and a half. Well, this tells us that this function could be exponential. Exponential functions are one where the ratio between consecutive terms is constant. Now, that common ratio is not two and a half. Again, it would be if our x would be incrementing just by one, but we have incremental by two here. Um, so actually finding the formula is a little more complicated than that. We can do it, though. Let's take a look. g of x 
is equal to, it's going to be some constant value times a to the x. That's the format for all exponential functions. We just need to find the constants p0 and the constant a. p0 corresponds to the y-intercept. This is this makes sense because when x is 0, a to the 0, no matter what constant a is, would be 1. So we'd just be left with p0. And in this case, p0 is 2. So we have g of x is going to be equal to 2 times a to the x. Let's see if we can figure out what that constant a is. Notice if we were to plug in x equals 2, we should get a y value of 5. That is, we have 5 is equal to 2 times a squared. Now we should be able to solve for a. Just divide both sides by 2. We get that ratio that we found above, 2.5 but that's what a squared is. To find a, we would take the square root of both sides, so a would be equal to the square root of 2.5. And now we have a formula for g of x. g of x is the exponential function 2 times the square root of 2.5 to the x. Um, if you want to write that slightly differently, you could also write that as 2 times 2.5 to the x over 2, because 2.5 to the 1 half is another way of writing the square root of 2.5. Notice this would also allow us to find extra values for our table, like g of 5. g of 5 would be 2 times 2.5 to the five halves, which you could just leave like that or plug into a calculator if you wanted a decimal approximation. All right, finally let's take a look at h of x. Is h of x linear? Well, the difference between terms 5 minus 2 is 3, 9 minus 5 is 4, it's not 3. So h of x is not increasing at a constant rate perhaps is increasing by a constant factor. What if we were to do 5 over 2? 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half. 9 divided by 5 is 9 fifths. That's, that's, not, uh, that's not 2 and a half. So h of x is not linear because it does not have a constant difference between terms. And it is also not exponential. because it does not have a constant ratio between terms. All right, and there you have it. Now you should know, at least by one example, how to tell if a function is linear, or perhaps exponential, or if it can't be either of those. Thanks for watching.